What's going on everybody, C4 here, and welcome to the newest episode of the Realistic Rebuild, and as voted on by the Patreon page, here is the newest episode, and it is going to be the Washington Redskins, and it's, you know, I thought it wasn't going to be that hard of a rebuild, I was like, yeah, you know, pretty much any team in the NFC East that's not the Giants is probably competitive enough that we're not going to have to, you know, strip the entire team down and rebuild it from scratch, and then I looked at their roster, and I went, oh boy, um... We'll look at that from this way. So at the quarterback spot, we're, we're screwed. Alex Smith is a huge cap hit. He's not going to develop much. He's a placeholder. So we finally actually get to look at drafting a quarterback or maybe waiting a year or two and seeing who's available in free agency. Uh, because we turn injuries, you know, everyone, just turn turn your injuries off if you're doing a realistic rebuild because everyone else has got to get hurt. Uh, Darius Geis is available to us year one, whereas, you know, he tore, tore his ACL in real life, which kind of sucks. He has that star dev. Which is beautiful, so, you know, balls to the wall. He should be uh, an 85, maybe, if we commit to the run enough this year. We still got Adrian Peterson. Chris Thompson's one of the best third down backs in the league. So I, I feel optimistic about our running backs. Wide receivers, I mean, the ages are all right for the top ones. You want 26 or under in a five-year rebuild for guys that you think might have a chance. Uh, Crowder's nice. Richardson is a massive contract. He's not bad, though, and we got Josh Doxson here who maybe, maybe not will pan out, but... I mean, we got some guys that could be all right, and they have a couple of dudes that I actually liked out of the college draft that if we were actually, like, legit doing a rebuild and, like, playing with them every game, Trey Quinn and Simi Cobbs Jr. would be two targets I'd love to play with. Uh, we got Jordan Reed. Thank God injuries are off, because if not, he get he gets hurt if he sneezes too hard, but he is one of the best receiving tight ends in the league. 28, the age is a little awkward, but we should be able to make do. Uh, offensive line is really Trent Williams and Brendan Schriff and no one else. And Shreff is literally the only guy that's decent for our rebuild that we can maintain for the whole time. Uh, we got uh, the D-line, the front three, because they play 3-4, is probably the strength of this team. You have Ioannidis, who is 80 overall. He's 24. You got John Allen, 23-79. And Deron Payne, their first-round pick this year, 21-77. So I assume that these guys are going to be our three core defensive linemen throughout this entirety of the rebuild, which is nice to have one position completely checked off. Uh, linebacking core, we got Preston Smith. Maybe he can develop into something. Who knows? Middle linebacker, Zach Brown's decent enough. But other than that, we definitely need to work at getting a second middle linebacker. Right outside linebacker, Ryan Kerrigan is nice. We got Pernell McPhee for whatever reason. I'm not going to lie. We're just going to throw him up on the trade block. I know they just signed him, but we'll see if we can get like a fourth, fifth round pick from him. Don't need him on the roster. Uh, secondary, Josh Norman's nice, but he's super old. We got Quentin Dunbar and Fabian Moreau. Don't really have any expectation for both these guys to develop, so secondary is going to be a big spot that we want to target in the draft and free agency. Uh, Monte Nicholson, maybe? What's his, what's his dev? Normal. That kind of sucks. We got Troy Apke, a.k.a. White Lightning from the draft. Okay. Um, Swearinger. I actually have seen Swearinger go up to like a 94 in free agency, so we might actually have a spot here. So it's not that bad of a team. It's not like it's going to be that drastic. We still have a lot more teams that would definitely be more difficult, like the Giants and the the Dolphins and stuff, and Bengals, but uh, the people wanted to see the Redskins, so I said, all right, for this midweek rebuild, we'll be taking our hand at the Washington Redskins. Clearly not a racist name, am I right? All right, let's get into the rebuild. All right, so we're getting like a first-round offer for Pernell McPhee, which is kind of ridiculous, so knowing that we could full-on just fleece the living shit out of a team, I'm going to take the lowest offer that we Oh, that one's pretty good, though. Third, sixth, and the seventh. The fourth and the seventh from the Jets. I mean, Pramel McPhee, we'll take this one. This is like the medium of it. Third, four, I, I feel like that third th third rounder is just punishing. Not You play this game a little bit for offering me a first and a second. Nah, screw it. I don't want it. We'll just go this. Fourth and a seventh. Keep it clean. Keep it clean, C4. Here we are at midway through the first season. Four and three, which is not... Great, considering the NFC East has been really good this year, but 4-3 and three is not a bad spot, given where this team is starting out. I mean, it's not a bad team either way. 83 overall, 87 offense, 85 defense. It's just also not that great. So, looking at players that we need to talk about resigning. Crowder, yep. Let's get you locked up right away. One of the best slot wide receivers in the league. Preston Smith, 25-79. I'm going to bank on you developing. I'll oh, go freak yourself. And that's it. Only these two guys. We'll see if we can hammer our deal with Preston Smith. He wants to try to bend me over. There's plenty of good 3-4 uh, linebackers in the draft. But we'll bump him up a little bit and try to retain him. End of year one. Uh, you know what? If you told me in most Redskin fans they were going 8-8 eight eight next season, I think most of them will be happy with that. Uh, that's probably against. Like Most people have the Redskins, I think, finishing last in the East. You're looking at like panels and stuff. Redskins, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like some biased Eagle fan. Redskins always give 
give the Eagles one hell of a fight. So I'm not trying to write them off. I'm just saying. Eight and eight with the roster they have, that's not that bad. Almost, well, if it wasn't for a tie, would have been second in the NFC East. Looking at the stats on the year, Alex Smith, who, if you remember, we did the Adrian Peterson career mode. Alex Smith won MVP, I think it was in year two. So let's hope that happens again. Uh, but in year one, 3,800 yards, 25 TDs, tw uh, 12 picks. That's about an Alex Smith season right there. Broke up. Whoa, we finally got some rushing yards. 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns from Darius Guys. That is by far the best year one running attack we've had so far. I love seeing that. And not bad from Chris Thompson. Um, receiving a 1,000 yards here from Jameson Crowder. Six touchdowns. Obviously, we saw we're able to lock him up long term. 704 from Richardson. Not living up to his contract. 705 from Jordan Reed. Not bad. Uh, might be expected a little bit better knowing that he played all 16 games. Uh, defensively, 118 tackles, 5 TFLs, 4 sacks from Zach Brown. We got 8.5 sacks from Ryan Kerrigan, 15 tackles for loss. That's a monster year from him. Um, not really much on the defensive line. Swearingen led the team with 2 picks. We gotta do better than that, Josh Norman. Looking at the yearly awards, very quickly, MVP went to Jared Goff. With the Offensive Player of the Year going to Goff. We had no one. Defensive Player of the Year went to Mant- Oh, Manti Teo. Gross. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Darius, guys. Very nice. Beating out Saquon Barkley and Ronald Jones. We got Defensive Rookie of the Year went to Roquan Smith with Deron Payne coming in number six. So some good individual awards. Eight and eight's not the worst starting point we can have, and I'm really impressed with how Darius Geis has played thus far. So let's jump into the first offseason. Hey, never thought of this. Benefit of being the Redskins is we don't have to deal with the Redskins when you're bidding on players in free agency. All right, here we go. First round pick. We have a couple options. We need to go. We need a left guard. We need a center. We could use a third corner, and we definitely need a new starting linebacker with Zach Brown. So that is where we're going to go with the value here. Shaq Quarterman out of the U. First round, 75 star dev middle linebacker. Welcome to the squad. So I look at our draft recap. As we saw, Shaq Quarterman in the first round, 75 star dev linebacker is going to slot in nicely with Zach Brown. In the second round, we went Ben Powers, the guard from Oklahoma, 76, normal dev. Third round, Ross Pierschbacher, the center from Alabama, 74, but he hits us with that star dev. Got that beautiful little mid-round stud. Fourth round, Damon Arnett from Ohio State. Ohio State low-key adding their name to be one of the, you know, the DBU schools. 73 for Arnett, quick dev, which was nice. And then the rest of the draft, we got Brian Edwards, Tehama, Easton Stick, and Nate Hall. Good draft class, considering that there was no one we wanted to sign in free agency, which is shocking as the Redskins, if you've ever played franchise mode to any depth. But, uh, yeah, let's get into year two and try to prove upon 8-8. Eight eight. All right, so as we start year two, this is where, our, you know, the game has told me before, Alex Smith plays like an MVP candidate. Here is our team offensively. We got Pierce Bacher and Powers, our second and third round picks, respectively. Uh, we'll be starting. That's pretty much the only change in the offense. So we have Cohesion. Uh, for an 87 overall offense. Defensively stays exactly the same. Minus Shaq Quarterman from the U. Maybe Ray Lewis 2.0. Who knows? I will be starting there. Uh, you know, it, it, I feel like hopefully we can do better than 8-8. Eight eight. But again, the Sim has told us. Alex Smith plays like a you know goddamn MVP right now. So let's see what happens. As we open up in the all-out free agency bid season opener. Midway point year two, four and two is the MVP Alex Smith myth at a reality wow all right good turnaround so looking at contracts um oof, this, this might be an expensive one Shrift absolutely needs to come back best guy on our offensive line long term and he wants more money because Trent Williams get retired Swearinger is already up to a 90 and safeties are kind of cheap so there we go now this is where it gets a little interesting Receiving backs don't really matter in the sim as much. And that is a lot of money to have Chris Thompson. Because, you know, in reality, Darius guys can do it all. So as much as this pains me, Chris Thompson are probably going to have to let him go. We'll re-sign Ioannidis, and that will be it. Well, where's this MVP Alex Smith I've been hearing about? Huh? 8-8 eight eight bullshit again. What are we, Jeff Fisher? Did Jay Gruden grow a mustache, move to Montana, and become Jeff Fisher? I mean, no one was catching the Dallas Cowboys 14-2. Pretty ridiculous, but I mean, those, okay, actually, that's not even gonna lie. Those are better numbers for Alex Smith year two. I guess year two Alex Smith always. It's when he's at 15. He's like a fine wine at 15 years. He's, he's finally aged enough that he stops throwing checkdowns, stops giving a shit. 
That's not that bad, to be completely honest with you. Still probably need a quarterback of the future. Darius Geis, really good once again. 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, which is... Hey, I'll tell you right now. Anytime you get a running back that goes over 1,000 yards in the sim, count yourself lucky. Receiving Crowder, very nice year as well. 79 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 TDs. Um, man, Chris Thompson is going to be... We're going to be losing like 1,000 yards from Chris Thompson if we let him walk. Oh, it's just so much money to pay a guy. Like, that's too much money to have locked into your running backs because we're going to have to pay guys soon, and he's going to be very expensive. Zach Brown, 103 tackles, three uh, sacks, two picks. We got oh – where's our pressure coming from? Six sacks, 10 TFLs from Kerrigan. I mean, we're getting the TFLs. TFLs are, are kind of important as well, but our outside linebackers are not getting sacks. And our secondary is not playing particularly well. Maybe we need to let a fire in their ass and draft someone. MVP – of the league went to Matt Ryan, Alex Smith coming in at nine. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, coming in at seven in the Offensive Player of the Year race in the NFC. Defense Player of the Year went to Deion Jones. Offensive Rookie of the Year. And we had no one. Defense Rookie of the Year. We had Shaq Quarterman coming in at number nine. All in all, we could all just do better. But, you know, we didn't sign anyone for ages because there's no one there. I'm not going to spend money for the sake of spending money. But let's hope that there's someone that piques our fancy here in the year two into year three for ages period so we can get rid of this 8-8 eight eight bullshit. All right, so I'm just using a completely random draft class. I have never seen an offensive lineman with a higher than 7 combine grade. I don't need a guard, but I do need a tackle. So we're going to go with this guy. We'll modify him to someone. Please be a freak of nature. Please be a freak of nature. Oh, 82 O lineman. Let's go. Draft recap time. So we took our freak 82 overall guard. We moved him to right tackle. And we made him Trey Smith out of Tennessee. 82 overall. Either way, he can either be the successor to Trent Williams or he can just be a man. Be his own guy at right tackle. Still really good to have him. Uh, then we got Jordan Silva. This tackle here from Washington. Didn't modify him or anything. Kept him as is. But he did modify this. A receiving back. Because it was pretty influential in our offense. So with Darius guys preparing him with Travis Homer. The running back from Miami, one of the better receiving backs. And I'm watching this. I don't even know his stats. I've just, every time I've watched Washington, or, uh, the U play, this Homer guy is catching like a 70-yard pass. So I'm going with that. And the rest of the draft class, not going to lie, maybe one of the worst draft classes I've had. I was just, the scouting sucked, to be completely honest with you. But when you down an 82 overall player at pick 17, life could be a lot worse. And once again, free agency, non-existent. Nothing there. There was 99 Deion Jones, didn't need him. Around mid-season point, we're sitting at 5-1, and one, sitting pretty top of the NFC East. Eagles kind of closing in, but I'm feeling good, feeling good. Here's our team. I mean, Alex Smith down to an 81, kind of stinks, but uh, and Jordan Reed starting to regress, and, and, and Trent Williams is starting to regress, and, and, and Josh Norman starting to regress, and, and Kerrigan's regressing, and Swearinger, and Zach. We got a lot of old guys regressing here. So, uh, might need to try and win the Super Bowl this year. I don't know. Crazier things have happened. But we're 5-1. and one, Looking at players that need to come back. We do not have a replacement yet for Trent Williams. So, we will sign him back on a one-year deal. Or two-year deal, even. Oh, wait. What's going on with that guy's haircut? We'll have to check that back out. We don't have a replacement Josh Dorn. So, we'll get him back on a one-year deal. Oh, my God. Are all these dudes not going to take one-year deals? Oh, there we go. Kerrigan. Got to believe Kerrigan will. Zach Brown. You know, he'll be all right. All right. John Allen. Definitely need to lock you up long term. Okay. And he regressed. He was a quick dev. And when we started, he had a star, I think. Dunbar. Hey. Monte Nicholson. Come on, dog. Welcome to the team. Hey. Fabian Moreau. Now nah, you can go. So we just got to hammer out some deals with Josh Norman and Trent Williams. Our two old cats. And uh, see if we can continue this 5-1 and one push into the playoffs. What the fuck is going on with this guy's hair? <laughs> oh, my God. I've never seen... I don't think I've ever seen someone look that ridiculous in my life. What? He's got like a spider web on his forehead. A doily. Got that playoff berth, baby! Take it on. And actually, having to go to Soldier Field, take it on the 9-7 and seven A Bears. 91 offense. I'll show you something cool. I made Samaj P. Ryan a fullback just randomly. I was like, all right, whatever. He's a big lad. Made the Pro Bowl finally. Pro Bowl appearance. Plus, I was like, he had plus three. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Just sheds a tear. Uh, Uber competitive NFC East became second with 11-5 record. But, hey, I'll take it into the playoffs. Year three. Alex Smith. My God. 
That Alex Smith MVP form, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe it was year three that he did really good. 3,800 yards, but 38 touchdowns to nine picks. Good God. Perfect scheme fit. 1,400 yards, eight touchdowns from guys. Look at that. Ten touchdowns from P. Ryan as a fullback. What? Uh, 92 catches, 1,200 yards, 14 TDs from Crowder, who always is a sim beast in Madden. He's pretty much a, you know, one of the go-to guys. 700 yards, 9 touchdowns from Jordan Reed. Pretty good year there. Uh, man, look at P. Ryan. Where is this coming from? He had 10 touchdowns, 400 yards, 13, 400 yards, 13 touchdowns from a fullback, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. Uh, defensively, no one get over 100 tackles. Okay. 11 sacks, 10 TFLs from Preston Smith. Not bad. I'd like to see that. Uh, four picks from Swearage, two from Quinton Denbar. Okay, let me just find out what is P. P Ryan's playing as our power back, maybe? How? How? How's a fullback getting 13 touchdowns? Don't care. I'm still going to take it. John Gruden playing like his brother, or Jay Gruden playing like his brother, John Gruden, and making P. Ryan his own friggin' Mike Allstott, I guess. Uh, MVP went to Blake Bortles. Alex Smith coming in at number 10. NFC Offense Player of the Year went to Matt Ryan with Alex Smith at number 10. Defense Player of the Year went to Roquan Smith. Zach Brown at 5. Shaq Quarterman at 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Travis Homer, our nice little scat back at number 3. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Yeah, no one. Don't matter. Made the playoffs. Have a 13 touchdown fullback. Bears ain't going to know what hit him. Let's get into it. All right, here we go in the sim. I better see five touchdowns from Samaj P. Ryan in this game. All right, we jump up to a three to nothing lead. Again, this is probably our last chance of the you know the window of having all of our old players like the Josh Norris, Trent Williams, Alex Smith. So it'd be nice if we stop stalling and actually got a touchdown. Oh, okay, we should keep kicking field goals, I guess. We need more P. Ryan. Need more P. Ryan. Oh, another field goal. How awesome. Are we going to win this game only with field goals? Because that'd be ridiculous. Over in the red zone and turned it over. I actually kind of think it'd be awesome if we won this game with only field goals. Oh, there we go. We had to ruin it by scoring a touchdown. What an ugly game. 15-0. The Redskins move on over the Bears. 250 yards, no touchdown. Let's see what, what goes into a game that's 15-0. Did P. Ryan... Okay, Geist went off. That's that's pretty good for Geist. Crowder had a good game. But they didn't even get the P. Ryan involved. Three and a half sacks from Preston Smith. We got a pick from Zach Brown. All right, whatever. We're moving on to the NFC Divisional. End of the Divisional round. We get to find out who the best team in the NFC East was here in, was this, 2020, 2019? As the Eagles and the Redskins do battle. And it looks like the Redskins jump out to a 14-3 lead. Ooh. In the link, too. That's a probably... Oh, my God. We missed the extra point, but three TDs in the link. That is a quiet Lincoln financial field right in there. But you can't count the Eagles out. They are really good at halftime adjustments, so we need to keep our foot on their throats, if I know my Eagles. Can't give Carson Wentz an opportunity to come back. Doug Peterson will scheme. We have this 13-point lead. Two minutes to go. We have the lead. And then we kicked them the ball. Look, just for the Eagles to get a one point. Oh, my God. Come on. Win it. Oh, we beat the... Oh, I don't want to celebrate that. I'm not going to celebrate that. But we beat the Eagles, and we're going to the NFC Championship game. How are we doing this, man? What What is this team built up of? Alex Smith was average. No turnovers, I guess. Alex Smith. Geis was pretty nice. 99 yards. Okay, come on. Look at P. Ryan. That's probably why we got P. Ryan involved. Uh, good... Re I mean, average receiving defensively. Does someone stand out? Preston Smith is having one hell of a playoff run. Two picks there. Norman and Zach Brown is probably the, the difference maker. But I'll take it, man. Beating the Eagles. Now we are going to the NFC Championship game to take on the 10-6 Cardinals. Do they have Josh Rosen still? Who knows? Probably not. All right, baby. Let's get it. Let's get it. Seven. Maybe the Redskins are going to be like the Chargers this year. Like They're just that good in the sim. I just jinxed it, didn't I? I just jinxed it, didn't I? This is a shootout right now. 28 points. Oh, my God. Who's their quarterback? I don't know, but he's not as good as ours. Alex Smith. They have Josh Rosen in. I like to see that at least Josh Rosen is still there kicking around and uh, can make things interesting. But we are stalling here. Have not done much in the second half. A touchdown would be beautiful. No, we have to miss the field goal. Great. A lot of nothing going on. Come on, team. Fourth. We'll come in. We'll come in on fourth down and probably just ruin it, but... 
feel like I feel like this is a pretty oh we gotta go guys right do we gotta go guys we gotta run with Darius guys I think we do we'll just go dive a simple dive two minute warning and then we'll call actually we'll go stretch is stretch the OP play I don't care we'll go zone weak I probably should have ran a C4 special but we'll go zone weak move the move the chains and see if the sim can do the rest and did we just gain a point? I thought we were at 20. Rip! Rip! Come on! Rip my team. Rip my team. Great blocking there. That's the Redskins we know as we fall in the NFC Championship game. Shouldn't have came in. What the fuck happened here? He has no touchdowns and we still lose. Oh, David Johnson. Okay, makes sense. All right, let's go into year four. Hopefully, we can sign a free agent this year. We got to push this team over that hump. So, we're looking at Allen Robinson and Sidney Jones as two free agent signings. That would be massive. Big time boost to the squad. And we're the leading bid for both of them. So, fingers crossed. All right, well, we got Sidney Jones in free agency. Allen Robinson didn't want to come. And this was, I mean, the draft looked, you know, this doesn't look terrible. 75, 76, 75, 73s and stuff. This is like the worst dog shit draft I've ever seen. No legit, like, high overall prospects, even though we're picking at 30. No really good sleepers. So we got, you know, 75 normal, 76 normal. We got a nice 75 normal because why not? This is just the epitome of this draft. So hopefully, you know, Alex Smith can get the job done for another period. If not, we might have to wait for a year five Super Bowl or bust and hope that God some legit QB comes available via free agency. Or we get a Gary Yount situation where he can draft a baller ass quarterback and he can win it as a rookie. Year four, here's our team again. Not a whole lot of change. Thanks to just not a whole lot there in free agency. Uh, offensive line goes as such. Pierce Bacher has developed very nicely. 84, Trey Smith, 84. Jordan Reed is regressing, but he's still all right. Uh, Crowder's been a pleasant surprise. Geis has been nice. You know, Alex Smith is an 80. Last year he was an 81 and threw up 38 touchdowns, so I'll take the scheme. Uh, defensively, the front three here is not developing as quick as I would expect it. I've seen, you know, for the Bears and stuff like that, we've seen our D-linemen get up to the 90s quickly. Uh, linebackers stay pretty much the same. Quarterman up to an 87. Nicholson's developed actually pretty nicely. And now Sidney Jones coming over from the Eagles will be our starting corner. 91 offense, 89 defense, 86 overall. We are a game away from playing the Super Bowl. At that minimum, our season goal will be to make the playoffs. I want another opportunity. Midseason point, 4-2. I mean, we're well on our way to getting back into the playoffs. It looks like the NFC East is going to be a three-horse race because the Giants are butt cheeks, but we are still a game behind, but we have a game in hand to the 5-2 and two Cowgirls. Uh, looking at contract negotiations, Darius guys, yep. Jordan Reed, yep. Deron Payne, yep. Dunbar, we'll take him and let Josh Norman walk, and then the rest of these guys can pound sand. As year four comes to an end, eight and eight. Nice eight and eight record. AFC, NFC has been super competitive yet again, and we, we got to move on. I mean, here, we're gonna make here. Here's gonna be our bold prediction. I'm cutting him right now. Alex Smith is gone. I'm freeing up roughly eleven million dollars in cap space. We're getting a brand new quarterback. It has to happen. He's holding our team down. As sad as it is, I don't even look at his stats were last year, but don't care. I don't even care. Wasn't good enough to get the job done. He could throw 39 touchdowns. 8-8, eight and eight, not good enough. I'm holding him responsible. Let's go in the offseason. Hope there's a quarterback. How realistic is that for you, motherfucker? Okay, well, I actually have his stats. 3,900 yards, 32 touchdowns. I mean, that's not terrible, to be honest with you, but... It's also not what we expected. Darius Geis has maintained his averages. 1,300 yards, 10 TDs. 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns from Crowder, who's OP as shit. Uh, 707 from Jordan Reed. Defensively, 107 tackles from Zach Brown. Sacks are down again. but I mean, the tackles for loss are nice. We're good against the run. Uh, interceptions, five picks from Swearinger. Three from Sidney Jones. But uh, other than that, man, it's just not good enough. Just not good enough. How many touchdowns did P. Ryan get? I know that's probably the question everyone wants to see. P. Ryan got, uh, he went from 10 touchdowns to having none. That's that's why that's why, that's why why we didn't make the playoffs. We didn't get enough P. Ryan involved. So I've been saving Jay Gruden's uh, little XP there so that maybe we have to buy a quarterback XP package to help us out. But uh, let's find ourselves a quarterback in this offseason as we head into a year five Super Bowl or bust scenario. Here in free agency, who do I choose? Lamar Jackson or Josh Rosen? Hmm. 
There's no bids on Lamar. We have yet to do a rebuild with Josh Rosen yet. I don't want to spoil that in a Redskin one because that's for the Cardinals. We've already done with Lamar Jackson. It didn't work out. Oh, what do you call it? Retire? Oh, Alex Smith's still down there kicking. We'll we'll go we'll go Lamar Jackson. We'll see if a new change of scenery, this scheme that has worked well for Alex Smith, will work out well for Lamar Jackson. Look at the rest of these signs though. We're going in. Dante Pettis, Isaiah Oliver, Traquan Smith. I freed up a lot of cap space to make this happen. Let's get it. Ooh! Not a bad first round pick. Wasn't even planning on showing off. I was like, all right, let's just grab this linebacker because um what's his name? Ryan Kerrigan's like a 79. I just kept him because, you know, I want to have someone that Redskin homers can cheer for. But then, psh, bye. Nick Myers at pick 17, 83 quick dev from Ohio State. Welcome. Welcome to the team. All right, so looking at a draft recap, it was a fairly successful draft. Nick Myers, 83 linebacker. Woo. Uh, tight end was all right. This guy, Emery Campbell, left tackle Temple, star dev. All righty. This wide receiver I thought for sure was going to be dope. Uh, he was like a fifth round guy, looked height, weight, speed. Speed was the only thing that kind of stung. Look at the route running 88. Uh, I was like, oh, this guy here's going to be like a 79 quick. And he's only a 75 normal, but still not, that's not that bad. And then we just whiffed on a sand, whatever. Whatever. Still a dominant draft class. Anytime you get an 83, it's beautiful. Best player in the draft. All right. Super Bowl or bust time right off the rip. Here's the team. This is our cards. We're going all in. This is what we're rolling with. Lamar Jackson at quarterback. Darius Geis, 94. Crowder's a 93. We got Pettis. Jordan Reed's regressed down to an 82. No more Trent Williams. We're going Silva. Jordan Silva as our starter. Oh, boy. Hopefully that works out. But we still have a 91 offense, 88 overall, 91 defense. This is a team that's capable of doing anything. Uh, we brought welcome Isaiah Oliver into the secondary. Jack Quarterman, new member of the 90 club. Feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. And someone suggested this in the comments. If I ever get a player that gets a 99, we will do a little bit of a ceremony and give him the 99 swag. Uh, but I don't think maybe guys, maybe guys might have a chance. But uh, might not have to use that in this video. But that will be something you'll see in future videos. So Super Bowl or bust time. I'm gonna. Fe I feel like this team's either gonna get 11 or 12 wins, or we're gonna go eight and eight. So uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, everybody. Whew. There's the buy. There's the buy, baby. What we finished? 12 and 13 and three. I was gonna say 12 and four for sure. It seems like that's most consistently what we get in year five. 13 and three. All right. Uh, Lamar Jackson. That's pretty damn good. 3,800 passing yards, 34 TDs, 10 picks. Whatever this scheme is. Maybe Kyle Sh or uh, Jay Gruden's playbook. Maybe even the best, most QB friendly playbook we've had. Because Lamar Jackson is definitely not a scheme fit. He's a scrambler. I think they need West Coast. But, they, man, that's a big year from Darius, guys. 1,600 rushing guards, 10 touchdowns. That might be the most rushing guards we've had so far. So, definitely, I could say, without a shadow of a doubt, whatever scheme we're running in Washington has been the most success by a long shot we've had running the ball. So, if you are a person that likes to sim and is struggling to run the ball, maybe just try the Redskins, though, because our offensive line is not... We've had more overpowered offensive lines and rebuilds and not been able to put up these kind of numbers. Uh, receiving Crowder's been absolutely phenomenal yet again. 81 catches, 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns. Let's just see... Throughout his stretch here, we took over here. Look at that. Actually, no, what did we did? 2018, yeah. 1,000 yards, six touchdowns, 1,212, 1,214, 1,313, almost 1,213. He's a monster. Absolute animal. Uh, no one else really did anything notable. Defensively, Zach Brown, 94 tackles, 10 TFLs, 5.5 sacks. So he's getting that old man strength kind of season. 11.5 sacks from Preston Smith. That's pretty good. Uh, four picks from Sidney Jones, who's been good ever since we brought him over and kind of snagged him from the Eagles. A couple doubles and a single. Looking at the yearly awards. MVP went to Baker Mayfield. Lamar Jackson, number nine. I guess the only thing was, I guess, you know, I didn't expect that from Lamar Jackson, considering he already did the Ravens rebuild and he wasn't particularly amazing. But as long as Alex Smith and Josh Rosen weren't above us there, I'll take it because those are the only quarterbacks we had for our, to choose from. Did we win Coach of the Year? Jay Gruden, Coach of the Year. Congratulations. Offensive Player of the Year in the NFC. Uh, Lamar Jackson at 10. Defensive Player of the Year in Daquan Alexander. Preston Smith at 4. Shaq Quarterman at 5. Zach Brown at 7. So we have one hell of a linebacking core. Uh, does this sound? Uh, it doesn't matter. These guys aren't even real. So 13-3. First round by. And in the divisional round, we're taking on the 9-7 and seven Bears as we enter a Super Bowl or bust. Now, the last rebuild we did was the Jets. 
And I got cocky. I said, oh, we've won a couple rebuilds in a row. Maybe we'll just play the sim. We lost. We lost. We didn't win any Super Bowls with the Jets. That comes up as a L on my rebuild score chart. Not messing around with that today. We're going to be going in here and we're going to be winning a goddamn Super Bowl with the Redskins. So first up, it's the Bears. Oh, get there. Very nice. Able to pull one back as we're down. 10 zip. Dante Pettis, 10 7. All right, in the red zone, down 10. Trying to make it a nice three point deficit at half. I'm telling you right now, this Bears. We just did the Bears rebuild. This defense is pretty damn good. And it's going to. I don't know, man. I don't know if we have the juice, man. For whatever, I don't. I think I'm using default sliders, so Lamar Jackson feels the exact same speed as like Akeem Hicks, who's like a 38 year old defensive end. So uh, that's my mistake. But we're, you know, we're gonna deal with it. It's the default slider, so it should work, right? Should be able to find a way. So let's see if we can get a nice little C4 special attempt here on the four yard line, second and goal. Get our best player, Darius Geis, involved. And there you go. That burst takes it to the edge and cuts the deficit to three. Come on, dude. Every fucking 50 50 pass is picked off. Like, what the fuck, man? Get me out of that stupid animation. I had no chance on that play. I had no chance. I didn't. I hit left bumper. Wasn't out of the drop back until I was sack fumbled. Get that garbage out of Madden, man. Look at that. I, <laughs> that was predetermined. Everything about that was predetermined. Look, what is all this? Throw the fucking ball away. Too early in the morning for this shit, man. I'm going to start my day off on a fucking bad note. Bullshit. All right, we need to score a touchdown here. If any chance of being able to win. I don't, I don't fucking give a shit right now, man. This game's so garbage. Oh, it's the sack. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. Love that one. Love just insta sack. What's our offensive line? Our offensive line is apparently the worst offensive line ever made. Fourth and 18, game on the line. I should just throw this away. All right, we got a little bit of time. I mean, we can float that into Jordan Reed, and he makes the catch. Okay, now let's watch the defense give up an insta sack because we can't make it just so I play the entire game. We have to have the sim, the team we build do so. Oh my God, they got a turnover. Okay. The game, the game's feeling me saying something credit negative about it, where I've been overly positive for the whole time it's been out because I have been enjoying it. So there's some EA, EA right there, starting to go. Okay, let's start putting some good vibes back in this game. All right, let's do this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Jamison Crowder, come on, Jamison Crowder. Game's not over yet, but we got the lead. They're probably gonna get a touchdown, so we're gonna need to come back and put some points up. What a punt! If they, if they go 96 yards and win, they deserve to win, man. I don't deserve to win. And, oh, they turned it over. We're going to be able to get out of here with a victory somehow, some way. Thank you, EA, for juicing my game here. Matt Nagy can't believe it. Can't believe that EA came in, juiced my game, went from giving me absolute dog shit bullshit to like, hey, look, the Sims actually going to maybe accurately represent how well your team is. Going up against a not severely underpowered, but let's be honest, the Bears aren't quite under par where my 91 offense and 91 defense are. We're able to get the one point victory. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, those interceptions. Okay, one of those interceptions, both those interceptions were 50 50. I just felt frustrated at the fact that anything that's 50 50 with default sliders is going the way of the defense. Uh, but that fumble, the, the play action fumble was scripted garbage. I had, I literally hot the ball, was hitting the throw to running back. It didn't throw it, and it was a, that sack fumble animation. So that was very frustrating, but still, we got the victory. We get to live to see another day, and we get to go to the NFC Championship game. Let's get it. Opening drive against the Saints. We're a 91 overall team. The Saints, 95 overall. They have like 799. So, Jesus, we got our work cut out for us on this one. Let's see if we could scramble. Get your block, get your block. No, I guess Jordan Reed. Well, asking Jordan Reed to block is like asking a uh, goddamn what's two things that don't happen. Uh, 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 asking the Pope to do a line of coke because it line it freaking rhymes and lines. Ah, all right. Second and eight on the nine. Let's see what we got here. Come on. One thing I have not been able to do is run anything in with Lamar, but there we go. Because the D again, I'm just. 
using default sliders, so it means the run game is non-existent. But opening drive, take a touchdown for sure. Oh, let's go 18! 18! I don't even know who that is. Who's 18? Can we get a shot of the back here, dog? 18 could be Pettis, maybe? Yeah, Dante Pettis finally does something. Because obviously the Saints were going to score an instant touchdown. So we're able to gain that seven-point lead back. If we can go up two touchdowns for half, I'm feeling somewhat confident we might be able to win this one as the as the underdog, even though we're the home team. Oh my God, man! Lamar Jackson's throwing animations. Maybe that's what we got to chalk it up to. Love the last the fumble in the last game. Like he's so slow getting out of his stance, his dropbacks. I don't know why that is. I mean, what is he? An 86 overall? I figure like that kind of shit should be the, for the like, guys that are like, oh, I'm a 50. About that good. All right, we're gonna scramble. We're gonna make this. Oh. We'll get out of bounds as a late hit. I feel like that was a late hit. No, okay. Goddamn league's racist against black quarterbacks. Cam Newton can't get a late hit. Carson Wentz is half black, pretty much. He doesn't get late hits. I guess Lamar Jackson doesn't. Come on, Colin Kaepernick. Set it for the real issues. Oh, get in there. Oh, look at that. Just insta just handing it to him. Beautiful. Beautiful. The injustice continues. All right, hope everything's working properly now. My game crashed, so why not come in real chilly and just connect with Zach Ertz across the middle to move the chains. First game crash of Mad 19 on PC, truth be told. Oh, let's go, Lamar Jackson. Don't fumble it for the love of God. Third and 14 moves the chains. Thank you. And this is gonna be game. <laughs> Why not have an accurate representation of the run game in Madden 19 with it as well? But we're going to the Super Bowl, babies. Boring game, boring win. Don't care. We'll take it. Held Nick Fitzgerald to 45 yards passing. Suck it. We're going to the Super Bowl. I think we're playing the Texans. Don't matter who we're playing. We're winning it. All right, we're rolling right now. We had to punt it, obviously. Now the Texans have a three to nothing lead. But we're rolling. But we're rolling, and they are respecting that running back pass. So we're going to take off with Lamar, who's going so slow. Not anywhere near his 90 speed, but he still takes it up to the one, which means you know what play we're going to. Soon to be available on C4 merch, C4 special. I don't know when, I'm gonna, when that's going to be out, but that is going to be the first t-shirt design. Spoiler alert. And watch it work to perfection here with Darius Geis. Look at the burner on this dude. This dude got that meow. 7-3 lead, Redskins. All right, we've been able to slant our way down the field. Wasn't pretty, but I don't give a shit. Especially if I'm getting C4 special blocks like that. So we are in position to equalize or win it. And by winning it, I mean win the half. You know, that's 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 Vince Lombardi 101. Win the half. That's a Vince Lombardi John Madden quote. If you win both halves, you'll probably win the game. First and goal from the five. Come on, let's go with some... I don't, I don't care. I will abuse this slant cheese. Where's, oh, don't fumble it. Don't fumble it. Get in because you're the superior athlete and give us that halftime lead. Oh, let's go. Hold your block. What the fuck? Dante Pettis has like 95 speed and gets caught from behind. Come on, man. But What a play from Lamar Jackson. It was J.J. Watt. Breaking out of a J.J. Watt tackle. Honey Badger don't give a shit. Don't have a chance in hell. But, man, who the fuck is 33? 33 should not have made that play. But look at this, man. Lamar Jackson breaking out of a J.J. Watt. Well, probably would have been a sack fumble. Beautiful play. Oh, he can run it in! A rush, a long rushing touchdown. Say it ain't so. We get the lead back as he's driving the whip. Oh, uh, uh, uh. run game. That's the run game. Oh, <laughs> uh, let him score. It's the only way we're gonna have a chance. Back to back fumbles. Nice, nice, nice. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. You like that? Gotta love it. Sack. You know how they say, if you don't love what you do, 
You gotta fucking kill yourself. So let's just keep loving it. Alright, time to send it. Loving this game. Time to send it. A lot of cheese in today's episode. Let's just... Let's see if we can get a little bit of pocket presence, which we don't have, and send it. And, oh, nice. Oh, he almost had the catch, but they had that animation. Wow, man, so realistic. I am so immersed. I'm glad that we get those plays. You know, those plays that not everything feels like it's given to you, you know? That makes you feel like, wow, man, don't care about his 95 catching. I like seeing those, that immersion, you know, because not everyone makes those catches in real life. All right, let's start right here. And then interception. 80 does not even turn his head around. And ball hawked by Honey Badger. Wow, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Realistic Rebuilds. I hope you guys had as great a time as I did. Um, subscribe if it's your first time stopping by. Um, leave a comment in the comment section below for what team you want to see me rebuild this weekend. Hopefully it's as fun as this one. If it's any more fun than this rebuild, I'm probably going to have to, you know, uh, uninstall the game. So uh, thank you guys for enjoying. Uh, we're clearly a team with not a racist name. Uh, we made a really good squad, 91-91. Had some fun with uh, Alex Smith. Lamar Jackson fumbled it about 19 trillion times. But um, hope you guys did enjoy. And uh, at the end, you got to see the little... Uh, playlist that has other rebuilds that have not been as fun as this one um i'm gonna go i'm gonna go work out just to calm down here thank you guys for watching till next time c4 saying peace out and uh don't fumble in life just don't fumble in life quotes and words to live by Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, when well, you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not me